In the northern reaches of the Kruger National Park, life depends on one thing, water. In a land burdened by heat and drought, a single ribbon cuts its reliable course through the wilderness. It's a lifeline to all creatures, great and small. In the height of the dry season, everything must come to the river. From dawn to dusk, animals converge on the banks of the Levuvu as it winds its way through the many habitats of an area known as Pafuri. On a sandy riverbank in the far north of the world-famous Kruger National Park, a white-crowned lapwing strides through its territory. He and his mate control half a mile of riverbank. It's the height of the dry season, and the water level is at its lowest. The best time for nesting on the sandy banks. The Lapwings River is called the Luvuvu, and it flows through a very special piece of wilderness known as the Pafuri. Situated in the northeast of South Africa, Kruger National Park covers some 7,500 square miles. The Pafuri lies in the most northerly reaches of this expanse. It's sandwiched between two rivers, the Limpopo to the north and the Levuvu to the south. When they break their banks, they nourish a great floodplain that covers much of Pafuri. Here, lush lowlands feed herds of grazers, and iconic forests grow tall and green. Where less water gathers, hardier plants grow, adding to Pafuri's incredible biodiversity. Although it makes up just 1% of Kruger's total area, Pafuri is home to 75% of all the greater park species. Among these, some creatures stand out. From species rarely seen in the rest of the reserve, great herds of its iconic characters. But above all the others, it's Pafuri's birds that set this place apart. More than 450 species make their homes here, the greatest diversity anywhere in Kruger. For many tropical African species, this is the most southerly extent of their range. It's midwinter and the height of the dry season. After a protracted drought, the Great Limpopo River stands dry. But the Levuvu still flows, making it a busy watering point for birds and animals alike and the lapwings have done well to secure a spot on the banks. For almost all wildlife, each day includes a trip to the river during this trying time of year.
As morning dawns in Pafuri, a herd of waterbuck grazes on the marshy floodplain. With the males weighing up to 550 pounds, these are among Africa's most heavy-set antelope. They fuel their bulk by feeding on the most protein-rich grasses and herbs they can find. And during the dry season, it's the floodplain that provides. All this protein builds up a thirst, and waterbuck are among the most water-dependent of all antelope. As the day heats up, they'll move down to the Levuvu to drink. If not for the river, they couldn't survive here through the dry season. The river flows from west to east across the park, shaping the landscape and attracting its wildlife. Here in the west of Pafuri, it's carved a deep canyon through the rock. Known as Lana Gorge, it's testament to the Levuvu's steady flow over the millennia. Further downstream to the east, the rocky sides give way to sandy riverbed. Here, a young bull elephant has arrived early to quench his thirst. Pafuri, with its perennial water sources and green growth, is famous for its resident elephant herds. But this bull has left his herd, and for now he leads a more solitary existence. Social contact is an integral part of elephant life, and he will have spent his first 15 years in the company of his mother, siblings, aunts and cousins. As he moves down the river, he smells the air for signs of other elephants. If he can find a group of other bachelors, he may join them for the sake of companionship. But for now, he's on his own. Just downstream, another group of social creatures makes their home. White-fronted bee-eaters live in small families consisting of a breeding pair and up to five related birds that'll help them raise their chicks. In a few months, when early summer brings the rains, they'll dig more nests like these into the riverbank to lay their eggs. The rain will trigger a flush of insect life, and there'll be plenty of food to feed their chicks. For now, the adults can support themselves on the insects around the river. The little water in the Levuvu is enough to attract a range of water birds, and each starts its day by finding food in its own way. A pair of African jacanas treads delicately at the water's edge. Their long toes help distribute their weight on floating plant life. Together, the pair controls a territory along the bank, and it gives them all the insects they need.
a pair of Egyptian geese forages on aquatic plants growing in the stream. They get stuck in, reaching down for the tastiest morsels. A hammercop takes a more measured approach. He's after creatures living among the river vegetation. He prefers a breakfast of tadpoles, but he snaps up aquatic invertebrates too. For a three-banded plover, it's all about covering ground. He moves quickly along, pecking at the water's surface for insects and their larvae. It'll take a lot of this tiny prey to fill his belly. While some are enjoying the river's ample food supply, a great egret is finding things trickier. It's after fish and amphibians, but they're proving elusive. Perhaps another spot will be more productive. It readies itself for the strike, but fails again. With one last effort, he comes up with a morsel. It's not much, but it's a start. While most of the birds feed on small life, there are others here looking for bigger prey. The banks are lined with the scaly bodies of Nile crocodiles sunning themselves. Since the Limpopo River to the north dried up, many of the resident crocs have moved into the Levuvu. Here, the water still flows deep enough to sustain them. They're best known for ambushing prey from beneath the surface. But crocodiles will feed on fish too. They use their powerful tails to pursue their prey underwater. Despite their fearsome appearance, many other creatures seem comfortable in the presence of the crocodiles. A flutter of butterflies cuts a sharp contrast with the rugged reptiles. They're gathered to filter nutrients from the bank's muddy puddles. The winged gathering attracts a crowd of its own. Bee eaters. The picky birds scrape the wings from their prey before devouring them. family will join forces with neighboring families to defend their foraging territory against other bee eaters. The river's water is a magnet to insects in the dry season, and the bee eaters can't risk sharing their private food store.
for many animals, Pafuri has lots to offer beyond the Levuvu. The teenage bull leaves the river to make his way through the bush, looking for companions. But he doesn't get far before his stomach distracts him. A full-grown elephant bull can weigh up to five tons. His dinner plate-sized feet are specially evolved to support this massive weight, with thick cushions of fatty and fibrous tissue to absorb the pressure. His trunk is the perfect tool for reaching the best leaves high in the trees. The riverside vegetation is his first snack on his day's quest for company. Pafuri has other food reserves in plenty for an elephant, including one type of tree in particular that the park is famous for. Known as fever trees, their smooth yellow-green bark is unmistakable. Early settlers found that people traveling or living near these trees contracted terrible fevers. They blamed the trees themselves for the illness, but the blame was misplaced. Fever trees favor moist areas and often grow near swamps, the favorite breeding grounds for the real culprits, malaria-carrying mosquitoes. The dense stands of picturesque tall fever trees are icons of the Pafuri. They thrive in the alluvial soils of the floodplain and are regularly inundated with water when the rivers break their banks. These serene, shady forests are a favorite feeding place for many at this time of year. A lone eland grazes quietly on the undergrowth. Not far away, a massive elephant bull disturbs the peace. He strides through the forest in a foul mood. And it soon becomes clear why. He has a handicap to his most powerful tool. It's an old injury to his trunk, possibly caused by a crocodile's jaws, but more likely, a poacher's snare. He can't fully extend it vertically to reach leaves. Like all elephants, he has the strength to bring them down to his level. Once he chooses a tree, his incredible power takes care of the rest.
With the leaves at ground level, he's finally able to satisfy his agitating hunger. slowly off through the forest. Beyond the fever trees, a herd of African buffalo grazes out in the open. The grasses grow tall on the floodplain, but they're dry and tough at this time of year. This doesn't phase the buffaloes. They prioritize quantity over quality and can subsist on coarser fodder than most grazers. The herd is a moving restaurant for oxpeckers that pick away at pests and parasites. Despite the adults' impressive horns, the herd is wary of predators. For the buffaloes have youngsters with them. Eventually, they've had enough time in the open and head for the cover of Mopani Thicket. These dense woodlands thrive on Pafuri's higher ground and add yet another habitat to the park. Mopani is well known for its ability to withstand dry conditions. In the heat of the day, the butterfly-like leaves fold close to reduce the surface exposed to the sun and minimize water loss from evaporation. They're also a fantastic source of protein for Pafuri's animals. But today, it's a brown snake eagle that makes best use of the golden trees. It could perch up here for hours, searching its surroundings with piercing eyes for its favorite prey of snakes. When it spots one, it'll swoop down from its perch, crush the snake's spine, and swallow it head first. For now, it stretches its feathers leisurely and surveys the comings and goings below. With raptors like these around, Pafuri's smaller inhabitants must keep a careful eye out. In the woodlands nearby, a deserted termite mound is home to a pack of dwarf mongooses. As the day heats up, the adults emerge from their burrow, one by one. A communal latrine outside the entrance gives a clear scent sign that this home is taken. At less than eight inches long, they have little defense against predators. But the family of 14 watches each other's backs. Sentries take to higher ground to get the best vantage point possible. Vigilance is key. There are pops to protect. They're the offspring of the dominant male and female, and they're around six weeks old. The whole pack works together to raise them. 
This includes the crucial tasks of babysitting and standing guard. Subordinate females help suckle the young, some without ever having been pregnant themselves. The rest of the pack heads out to scratch for prey with their long claws. In the undergrowth of the dry woodland, there's plenty of food to be had. A millipede, known locally as a shongololo, would be a juicy snack. Despite its many legs, it's a slow mover. It must make good its escape before the mongooses sniff it out. The little hunters do most of their foraging on the ground, and the millipede makes a lucky choice in climbing up a tree to safety. While the mongooses carry out their scuttling hunt, others plod slowly and steadily through the morning. An elephant mother is on the move with two youngsters. They've drifted from the herd to search the dry woodland for good fodder. the younger calf is the cow's offspring. It stays close to her for safety at all times. The whereabouts of the other calf's mother is difficult to tell, but it's a sad possibility that poachers have killed her for her tusks. The three must rejoin their extended family soon. There are lions in Pafuri, and protection within the herd is crucial for young elephants. Away from the Luvuvu, a few small wetlands persist. This pan formed from runoff surface water during the last rains, and there's enough here to last the dry season. It's attracted six big bulls. Among them is the young bull that was in the river this morning. The gathering at the water offers him some company at last. The heavyweight with the injured trunk is here too. Neither can compete with the biggest of these bachelors. He wears a tracking collar, and researchers have been following him for the last 10 years. He's now in his prime at around 45, and has picked up scars of his own during his long life. If all goes well, he could live to around 60. The other bulls give him plenty of space at the thirst-quenching water. The bull with the wounded trunk has learned to live with his handicap. To get maximum suction, he dips his trunk into the water at an angle. This closes the wound so he's not sucking in air. But when he sprays it into his mouth, it's a losing battle.
It's the elephant equivalent of drinking through a punctured straw. With this constant impediment, his agitated state from earlier in the day is easy to understand. But nothing soothes an elephant like a trip to water. And it always involves a good splashing. A tree serves as a favorite scratching post. And a final layer of dust will protect against the hot afternoon sun. When the elephants are done, as ever, it's Pafuri's birds that make a splash. Fork-tailed drongos bathe themselves by plunging briefly into the water before flying off. It's the epitome of going for a quick dip. A small herd of impala arrives for a quick drink. They're vulnerable with their heads down at the water and move swiftly on. As the midday heat sets in, many in Pafuri seek out water. The afternoon is especially busy on the banks of the Levuvu. The river draws all of Pafuri's diverse life, including some that are rarely seen elsewhere on the continent. Nyala are particularly shy antelope, sticking to densely wooded areas, usually near water. The riverine forests here are perfect habitat for them. As thirsty as they may be, they're cautious around the water. This is crocodile territory. Across the river, a female Nyala has arrived with her two offspring. They're just as cautious as the males, and for good reason. The young croc is probably too small to catch the mother, but it 
might stand a chance against the fawn, and they're not taking any risks. Downstream, the shaggy waterbuck have arrived with their young too. Even in the winter, temperatures can top 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The soft, moist sand offers some cool relief. Most of the water come with company, but an old buffalo bull has arrived alone. He's retired from the competition of herd life and no longer has to wait for hundreds of herd mates to quench their thirst before he moves off. He's not the only old male on the banks. The warthog boar's huge facial lumps are testament to his age. Having quenched his thirst, he turns his attention to food. Green grass is hard to come by this deep into the dry season, and the warthog sees the opportunity for a good meal. The riverside growth is a valuable source of food. For some, the banks provide a special treat. The seed pods of an acacia tree are a favorite snack for chakma baboons. With arms as long as their legs, baboons have evolved to walk on the ground more than any other monkey. But the youngsters are completely comfortable in the tree. Even as they pick their way between the thorns. For all the animals, the river offers food, water, and some relief from the afternoon heat. For the birds, the enduring flow serves another crucial purpose. Most birds must bathe to keep their feathers in tip-top condition for flying. The river is one of the few places they can do so at this time of year. And they take full advantage of the cleansing flow. A white-crowned lapwing indulges in an afternoon bath. Bathing isn't the only important part of feather maintenance. Others along the river preen to remove dust and parasites and carefully organize each feather into its proper place. is one of the bigger birds on the river today. But it's dwarfed by its cousin, the saddle-billed stork. It towers at five feet tall. Like all other creatures, big birds are drawn to the levuvu by the allure of water. An 11-pound white-backed vulture makes daily trips to water to drink and bathe. But among all of Pafuri's birds, one species rules the roost. As their name suggests, African fish eagles specialize in catching fish. 
Unlike the smaller birds, the low flowing river offers them little in the way of food here. But the eagles are resourceful. They prey on a variety of smaller life, including water birds. They're also fearless thieves, stealing prey from others as big as the saddle-billed stork. All this makes them formidable river mates for the other species. Like all here, they too must drink. The trickle of the river here is enough to satisfy the birds' needs, but there is one resident of Pafuri whose demands are far greater. Hippos need water deep enough to submerge their great bodies entirely. During the dry season, there are few places in Pafuri where this exists. Where the Levuvu meets the dry bed of the Limpopo, in Pafuri's easternmost corner, it has formed a natural dam deep enough for a pod of hippos. These huge animals have sensitive skins and spend most of their days submerged to escape the heat of the sun. This bull is in charge here. Should he need to assert his control, he can open his jaw to 150 degrees, bearing 20 inch long tusks. For now, he relaxes in the cool of the water with his pod. At the end of the Levuvu, the riverbed of the Great Limpopo shines white under the afternoon sun. Known as Crook's Corner, this point forms the border between three countries. South Africa to the southwest, Zimbabwe to the northeast, and Mozambique to the east. Here, the Levuvu River reaches its end. After flowing steadily eastward, it meets a boundary it cannot cross in the broad sandy bed of the Limpopo. For the creatures of Pafuri, the Levuvu has done its job, providing water through another hot, dry day. As evening sets in, the waterbuck are back, grazing on the floodplain. They enjoy the cool, calm end of the day. The young elephant mother and her calf have found their herd as they emerge to cross the plain for a drink in the river. On the Levuvu's banks, the baboon troop spends a little time by the water before heading into the treetops to sleep. The river is a picture of peace until the elephants get here. soft sand is welcome relief after the long hot day.
the Levuvu's banks are the site of a reunion. The older calf from earlier has found its mother and enjoys the river by her side. The herd takes its time to refuel with food and water. As long as the Levuvu continues to flow through this special reserve, Pafuri's creatures will thrive despite the rigors of the dry season. Sooner or later, heavy rains will come. The Limpopo will flow once more, and floodwaters will inundate the plains to spur new growth. Until then, the elephants and others will find all they need along the banks of the Perfuri's everlasting lifeline.